Yes, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, hope you are all able to see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, so we'll start with Java, okay. So what exactly Java is, okay. Okay, so you know, uh, when it comes to the computer, okay, computer doesn't know anything until unless you feed, you know, uh, something to it, okay. So it is kind of a machine which, which is expecting some instructions uh, from somebody so that, you know, it can work on a particular task. Okay, uh, so for for most of the things, actually, you know, uh, this programming languages are helping us, you know, to give instructions to computer. Okay, so the similar way, Java is one of it. Okay, and uh, so what exactly is Java, right? So Java is a programming language, okay, uh, which helps us to write some commands. Okay, what uh, when when I say commands, actually, you know, you it's kind of a program which is having all the instructions. What do we need to do? Okay, so commands is mat matlab, you know, it, it is code. Okay, to make uh, the computer to do a particular task. So all these like you know instructions, whatever you're uh, trying to you know write as a code. Okay, so it will finally it will have uh it will have an output okay right so that output will be you know uh kind of uh you know that kind of a task that we need to complete by a computer okay so let's see like you know java is one of the main programming language you know we use to instruct the computer okay and uh, it is developed on 1995 Okay, by some microsystems and James Coasley was the guy who initially developed this and later, you know, uh, this has been, you know, moved to Oracle Corporation. Okay, so yeah, so it, it basically Java is all built on, uh, you know, C, C++ and, you know, it has obtained, you know, a format of C and oop futures from the c++ okay so it's combined like you know c c++ languages were the first languages whatever we have okay and java built on top of it okay using uh, some of the futures from c and c++ okay so that's why you know we call it as java as a mediator between the computer okay so if you know java then you'll be able to teach your computer you know to execute the task and you know uh, java is used to create so many places okay like you know it's not only it's not only uh, giving some instructions to computer and uh, to execute some task and all and not only that actually it is uh helpful for create you know so many desktop related apps and uh, you know so many android related apps you know mobile phone apps so so android also uses you know java internally you know to run most of the applications and i can say like you know around three or four billion devices which are running currently on java okay so Java is also used to create uh, desktop applications. So when I say desktop applications, like, you know, uh, nowadays actually, you know, we are not using these desktop applications, but still, you know, there are some uh, applications that we use. Okay, so if you want to, uh, you know, listen some songs, right, you know, in your computer. So how do you do, you, you generally open that uh, music and, you know, there will be a music player music player you know to execute that file right so that music player is also called as a desktop application and you know most of the desktop applications that you are seeing which are built on java okay so yeah so you might uh, 
you, know, you might have a question like you know how the java works right so you you might be like you know getting how to write these commands and you know how i need to uh, how i need to tell this to you know computer and how computer can understand english and in english you know because you are going to write the program in english so how it is going to act right so let us let us see some steps okay so what do we do when we write a program okay we write a list of commands in english language right that is like you know that is a dot java file that we are going to uh, generate that we are going to create initially okay so once the program is done like you know the commands you completed the commands you saved it and then now you are now you are compiling that program okay when i say you when, when i say you are compiling that program what it does right the program is converted to an intermediate version called byte code okay this version is not readable by humans anymore okay one second sorry okay so the byte code is then read by a special software called java interpreter which translates it to a machine friendly language okay so when i say machine friendly language that is zeros and ones okay so so then uh, the computer reads the translated code and performs the task requested okay so what do you understand here first you write a command which an english language okay and you save it that file with the extension of dart java and then uh, you know you compile that uh, program okay using java compiler what java compiler does once you compile it actually it creates a new file which is having an extension with dot class okay and that is like you know we call it as a byte code so when i say byte code you won't be able to read that byte code you know it is it is can be it can be readable by java interpreter okay java interpreter will read that byte code and it again converts to machine friendly language so machine friendly language means you know it's a zeros and ones okay so computer can read only those machine friendly languages okay so java interpreter is the responsible guy you know to um, you know responsible to you know convert that byte code to machine language okay so once it is converted then computer can understand your request and it is going to process it you know it is going to process your task as you know whatever you mentioned in the program that's how it does okay java any any questions on this no okay thank you yeah um so as you know, I think you already done these things, okay? Uh, you know, the installing Java and all, okay? Let me go down. Okay, let's start. You know, uh, with the small computer program. Okay, so uh, so I we already told like you know we already uh, covered something like you know whenever you want to give some instructions to computer you do with the, you give with the, you give as a task and then you know it is it is going to execute uh, those commands and it will give you certain output so what do we call as java program right so a computer program you know it's simple like you know it will have some list of instructions okay whatever you wanted to tell it to computer and so so this program will execute okay execute and you know which will give you a certain output for you okay done by using 
okay a computer program you know uh, is written programming language like c c plus plus java etc so not only c c plus plus java so we have uh, numerous like you know number of uh, other programming languages you can give those instructions so simple you know like you know it's a instructions that you give to the computer which is called as uh, a computer program okay so you know these are the very basic things that you need to consider when you are writing a program okay in java language okay so these are the main things that you remember like you know that you have to remember uh, we will be using it in the you know uh, in the java program right what is curly curly brackets and curve brackets and square brackets and semicolon and double quotes so these things will play a lot of role okay when you write the java program okay so let's start with the first program okay um, you know it's uh, if you you know the you wanted to say hello world uh, you know so the instruction is you want to say uh, to computer to print hello world right so so you understood right like you know these are the pro, these are the main uh, symbols and you know main character special characters that we use in the program then uh, let's see you know how to write you know uh, this hello world program in java okay so there is uh, now you must be wondering how to tell you know that uh, how to print these kind of specific text you know uh, in uh, computer right so there is a uh, language package lang package that uh, java provided okay um, i'll tell you what exactly this lang package okay and uh, you know uh, in that lang package actually we have the system dot order println okay which actually prints prints you know anything to the screen okay so what we have done now here this is an example system dot out dot print i i have used you know you know uh, what do you say this curve brackets and you know uh, and double quotations and then in the double quotation i have just written hello world with a double quotation and you know i have closed that braces and uh, ended with semicolon so whenever you write some program okay whenever you write some instructions so definitely you have to close that instruction with a semicolon so java is java will follow these things very strictly so whenever you miss something you will definitely get uh, some kind of error okay it is going to give it to you when it is compiling your program okay so giving this instruction directly system dot out dot print uh, to the program or you know to a computer this will not work okay so that's what i was trying to say java is having very standard programming steps so you have to follow that you know to execute a program like this okay so let's see okay i uh, before going there i'll i'll show you one small example and then we'll go for uh, primitive data types okay and uh, non primitive data types and we'll go with an example okay just a minute
Okay. <clears throat> And if you see here, so this is what the specific syntax that we need to follow when you uh, try to write a program. Okay, so what you are what you're going to do, I will just try to write one more extra program. Okay, so let me create a new one. First, dot, Java. Okay. So I have written first program. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if you see here, right, this is like, you know, uh, a program, okay, uh, the default program that you need to write whenever you wanted to give some instructions using Java, okay, so you have to follow some certain standards like, you know, uh, the program has to be inside the class and, uh, you know, it has to, whatever the instruction that you are going to want to execute it, it has to be there in the main method, okay. So uh, going forward, I'll try to explain why we need to write these things, okay? But for now, just consider Java is following a programming uh, structure, like, you know, which is uh, OOPS concept, which, which follows complete OOPS concept, object-oriented programming structure. So when uh, a programming language is following that object-oriented programming structure, right? So it, it will be having very specific syntax, okay? You know, to create those programs, okay? So, so that you see here, you have created a class, which is called first program. And this class is same as your file name, okay? Whatever you have created it, the class name and the file name should be same, okay? And what you have done, you created a main method, okay, which is having a very small statement like, you know, you wanted to print hello world, okay. And I'm going to tell you like what exactly this main method is, okay. When, when you see something like, one example, okay, so, Let's take an example of your house, okay? What what exactly the house uh, will be having? Like, you know, house will have so many doors and so many entry points. But 
we generally have one entry point you know to uh, you know to enter into our house okay that is our main door right so whenever you know you wanted to start where to start computer has to know where exactly it instructions has to be started so that means so you know yeah whenever you wanted to enter your house actually we we go with our main door right so similarly computer is also going to start from here from the main okay and it starts the instructions that you have written under the main it is going to execute them sequentially okay so let's see uh, how this is going to perform and you know how to how to print all those things so i can see a green red you know green button over here you now to run this program let me run it okay okay let me do one small change okay so just Okay, let's save it. Okay, so if you see here, um, I have just run it, you know, there are no compiler errors. So let me run the program now. Okay, what do you do when you wanted to run the program? You have to, you know, use the Java command and the program name first program dot java that's it you can see right it executed okay so how do you compile this program right you know replete already Yeah, Replit already providing uh, those compiler related things. When you click on run button on top of it, actually it compiles all the programs. And also it runs, you know, the default class, okay? From one of this, I don't know what was the default class. Actually, I need to check it. So the default class should be something uh, which is having some hello world. So it is printing that. But if you want to run a very specific program, whatever you have, you have to use it, uh, the command called Java and uh, the programming name, it should it should do, okay? So I'll, I'll show you how to compile these things, just a minute, okay? Okay, so if you see here, I have a sample class, simple class. Okay, so let me open the command prompt here. Okay. Okay, I'm in the training now. Okay, so I have a simple class called uh, sample.java, right? So let me delete this that class file. Okay, now you see, let me check I have the version of Java or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I have the Java version installed. So I should be having access to call Java C simple.
Okay, so if you see here, uh, what I've done actually, I have created, I have used a command called Java C, okay, with a symbol dot Java. Uh, it's, it has been created this symbol dot class, okay. Immediately when I executed this Java C, Java compiler, okay. And this is how, you know, uh, which I was talking about, the bytecode, whatever we were talking about, uh, it is not understandable by the human, but it is can be understandable by Java interpreter. Okay, so let's see now what Java interpreter does. Okay, Java interpreter, when you try to execute this simple, then it prints that hello Java. So how Java interpreter is telling? You know this simple dot java simple dot class is going to be converted into a byte code sorry machine machine understandable code and then it is going to execute that class this is how it does okay hope you guys are clear now you know whatever we have discussed on the ppt okay now let me go back okay Okay, we 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 have learned uh, what how you know you create a sample program in Java, and uh, once again, yeah. So how how you how you need to create a program in Java? So and uh, we just printed that hello world in the console okay so let's see you know uh, the most important things like in the uh, java side and in any programming language okay so it is called variables what is variable right you know variable is a kind of a container which holds the data values in a program okay one second Okay, let me go back, it's fine. Okay, so if you want to write something or if you want to assign something, okay, to uh, certain certain values, right, you know. Okay, in the last program, you have printed a value, like, you know, a text kind of thing called hello world, okay. So it is very, you know, a constant statement that you are using it, you know, to print only the hello world. If you want to print something else, okay, what you need to do again, you need to write another system dot out dot print, okay, and which whatever the data that you wanted to return, like, you know, on the first statement, you have written hello world, and the second statement you wanted to return, like, you know, this is my first program. Okay, so you are going to keep on writing uh, those statements one by one, you know, in the program like system.out.println and system.out.println and, you know, you are writing those your statements. Okay, so writing those system.out.println continuously, which will not look good. Okay, so you have to achieve these things in a different manner, right? So how you can do that, okay? Whatever the text that you wanted to write, okay? You wanted to print the text in one go, okay? So let's say, you know, if you if you think like, you know, the, if there is something which can hold our text, you know, and which uh, that's something we can print it on the console, Okay, whenever we wanted. Okay, so you might understood that, right? You know, so I'm looking for something to hold my things for some time. And wherever I required, I wanted to print them, you know, you know, from that holded object or, you know, hold it some, uh, you know, whoever hold it, right? So that holding for some time, okay the data of your values or you know whatever you wanted to write something in program so this can be achieved by variables okay 
so what variables can do variables can hold something of your okay uh, the data whatever you wanted to write in in a, in a program output okay so it can hold those things so when it holds something you might be having a question okay how can i hold different type of data right so let's say we have different types of data right you know we you we might be having some values like you know numbers some text kind of format and we have some decimal numbers format okay and we have some something like you know decision making uh, kind of you know between true and false okay those things you have to generally we need we need those things as a you know a uh, different type of data right so java provides a data types concept okay uh, you know which is having a primitive data types which java already provided inside of it so these are like you know the primitive data types int boolean char byte okay short long float and double okay so all these comes under primitive data types so what this primitive data types hold right so this primitive data types hold different type of data okay which is useful for the program okay the program whatever we are writing it okay and there are non primitive data types okay including classes interfaces and arrays okay for now actually you can just take example as a string and uh, the second one is an array okay i'm going to tell that non primitive data types whenever it is uh, you know whenever we use it in the program okay so string is one of the non primitive data type actually it is a class which was provided by java okay and the string is help string helps us you know to store all the data related you know which which you wanted to store some string data right you know when i say string data kind of you know character set of sequence of characters that you can store it in the string okay so let us come to the primitive data types okay so what exactly this primitive data types will help us okay so uh, instead of uh, going with the theoretical thing you know i wanted to show you a program which i have already written okay uh, in the replit okay it's a kind of a demo of variable Just checking whether it is working or not. Yeah, it is working. Okay, one second, just a minute. This one, okay. Sorry.
okay so let me go to the program yeah what do you see here um it's a it's a basic example of you know all the variable types okay and also which included the data types as well right so what was the syntax that you observe here right you know you you might already know these two things which we are creating a class and also the main method where our program execution starts okay so if you see here there is a byte data type which i have used and you know byte b equals to zero and i have declared most of the uh, data types okay using different different values right okay so and i was trying to execute them like you know trying to print uh, them you know as it is whatever it is having okay so what do you see here like you know there is a specific uh, kind of length okay so what i was what i was trying to say for each and every uh, data type it can store till some extent but not you know beyond that okay so everything for byte short int and float and character and double there is a limit of storing okay so storing data okay so what kind of that what is that limit right you know i can i will give you those limits in the ppt you can just go through them okay later but i wanted to just cover those are very straightforward limits okay uh, like you know integer will accept from this range to this range and short will accept from this range to this range you know those kind of things like the limit will be having it okay so it is very straightforward but just just let me i just wanted to cover the float and double okay so to avoid some like you know uh, some confusion between them okay what exactly float does right so whenever you declare a float data type actually it occupies four bytes of memory you know in in your computer okay that is you know 32 bits of space okay and when whenever you see the double right so double is going to occupy eight bytes of memory that is you know 64 bits of your memory from the computer and what exactly the precision uh, for float right you know precision can be maintained uh, only for six digits so if you see here this is our float output okay so when you see here the precision is six digits right so if i go back to the example if you see here i have given so many things see so but it it finally made it as only six digits that is how float works okay but what double can handle right double can handle up to 15 bits of precision okay so if you see here i have around around three 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 nine twelve 13 okay 13 and if i check the console it printed everything 13 okay so let me do one thing i'll show you 5 6 14 15 17 18 okay let me run this program now see if you see here it just uh, took it up to the 16 digits okay 16 precision okay 15 sorry not 16 15 okay so 
by default actually when you uh, when you are creating something okay with the decimal okay java by default uses you know uh, double as a data type okay for dealing with fractional numbers okay so if you really want to uh, change that to the float data type we need to forcefully type cast okay with f so whenever you are trying to write something uh, you have to specifically type cast with f then only you know java is going to consider it as a float okay so that is how you know the differences between these things okay so between the uh, data and uh, float and you know double data types okay and you can see here the long long is you know one of the int data type so it can store uh, certain numbers uh, which is like more 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 bigger than you know the integer and short whatever we are using it here short is also for in you know integers very short numbers that you can use it you know when you hold a short and int is also having the same way but it is all these things are having very specific size limit so from this number to this number only it can store okay so that's how it does and uh, character when you see character actually character is uh, one byte okay it it can hold only one character at a time and uh, so you can use these characters whenever you required into in 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 some program okay and uh, the boolean which this was i was talking about the decision making uh, variable types okay so whenever you required something kind of a true or false situation okay so you know to execute whenever if it is true if you want to execute yes so uh, that time actually we use this uh, true command uh, sorry true instruction you know in a variable so that you know whatever the code that you wanted to execute it will be executed so boolean is kind of you know uh, one of the data type which can hold the conditional like you know um, the decision making uh, data you know into that like true or false okay so uh, these are the variables types okay so let me uh, data types okay let me know if you have any questions here otherwise i will move to the next topic uh, with the loops uh, will you hi will you tell me the public static void main statement uh, parameter string arguments about that yeah i will tell when i was covering the whoops concept okay uh, when it comes to the class and object okay uh, you know we are in the basic concept only so okay. if i tell now public static void main so you might be you you won't be understanding what exactly the static keyword and all those things because uh, as i mentioned uh, i will be covering those keywords okay uh, first and then i'll start uh, giving those example why uh, the public static void main is going to execute first okay? okay this one if you see here so we we are going to cover the concepts first and then uh, we go with the data types and operators but why i did not cover oops concepts because okay uh, you know before uh, i cover that oops concept right so i wanted to explain uh, you know the program you know an sample program whatever we are writing it so which requires some data types and all so then i'll cover operators and you know control flow statements and then keywords whatever we are going to use it in the application so in the keywords you will see the static keyword and you know all other public keywords okay why we use those things then you know you will you will get some understanding from there uh, you will understand you know the public static void main concept okay 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 so let me go to the conditional statements okay so yeah this is what okay when it is a programming language actually you know we have to be we have to 
we have to you know uh, deal with many scenarios when you are writing a program right so what kind of scenarios we might have it okay so let us consider you know the decision making statements okay we generally receive numerous calls from banks okay so when when a bank actually you know whenever you wanted to whenever you applied a loan or you know whenever you applied for something okay a credit card you know in a bank or in any other banks okay so generally what they do they will check your credit score okay credit score okay and uh, depending on that credit score actually they offer you uh, you know uh, certain cards or certain loans okay depending on that you know your interest is also vary right so let's see what it is okay so if you have a very good score okay like you know there might be a limit okay they might be considering it as you know 850 or 800 is the limit that they are looking for it so if your credit score matches that and you know, if it is you know if it is kind of a greater than 800 or you know it is a less than 800 so we were into a conditional uh, flow right you know whenever it is equals to that 800 or greater than uh, 800 so you are okay to issue the card or you are okay to you know issue the loan okay so then um, you know if it is less than that 800 the limit whatever you have set it up okay so that condition is going to fail right you know it it will come to the it will come to the negative flow of your condition okay that means you will not get a uh, you know a loan or a credit card you know so that way uh, we 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 follow the conditional statements okay so what what exactly it does it depends on your a uh, certain condition okay and depending on that condition output okay we will decide what flow that we need to perform and which flow we need to execute okay so the first one is very simple if statement okay and i'll go to the switch statement also where exactly we use it okay first let us run let us run the if statement how it does okay let let us take a program okay so this is how it does decision making right you know in your life actually we have numerous decisions like you know to do something and you know uh, like you know to select some subjects you know between maths and biology whenever you wanted to move out from the uh, class class you know um, grade 10 and you know whenever you are entering to the grade 11 and 12 so you you have to choose your subject right so we we have done so many decisions like that okay so in real life okay and the the thing is at the end of the day you will lead with yes or no okay the decision will be yes or no depending on your decision yes you are going to perform something and no you are going to perform something else right so this is called this is called you know to you know this is called like you know the decision making okay and when it come to you know ja computer how computer can make a decision okay so it is possible by using java okay java provides a uh, you know different type of syntaxes okay how to perform these kind of conditional flows and decision makings okay so which which task i need to work on okay which task i need to you know uh, execute on which condition okay so java makes very simple you know to to understand these things okay so let's say yeah so oh, this is what i was trying to say once the condition statement is known as if else statement okay so in the conditional statement 
there is a condition we supply to this statement and depending on that condition execution okay when i say condition okay so i already discussed with you like you know the credit score okay so the bank is going to say that okay pull the credit score from okay uh, the database and if that credit score is less than 800 or you know greater than 800 issue the credit card okay otherwise don't issue okay so what is the true condition the true condition is your credit score is greater than 800 okay so that is what the based on condition our program divides into two branches okay so what that branch one is if block and the another one is else block if block will does do tasks when condition is true okay else block do tasks when condition is false okay so this is kind of a decision statement right let's see how it does so this is very simple example like you know if you see here uh, if and then there is a condition that we are writing in the curly sorry in the in the what is this yeah okay if condition okay in this condition right you know in this actually you are going to write you know the condition whatever you wanted okay and in the curly braces actually you wanted to write the execution instructions whenever this condition gets true you are going to write the conditions which are really valid like you know true conditions okay that means in our example you are going to issue the credit card okay and else what it does so it is a false condition right so that means like you know our condition has been failed so it did not matched that means you know what you need to do you are going to cancel that form you know uh, customer applied form you know for credit card you are going to reject it okay so that is how it does if condition if and else okay okay before going to the switch statement okay i will just go back you know to the replit okay and uh, we can just execute one example yeah So I took very simple example. Okay, you guys are already aware of this one. Okay, so I just wanted to check whether if it is an even number or an odd number. So what is the condition when we go with even number and odd number? So if it is divisible by two, then it is an even number, and if not, it is an odd number, right? So. I have written a very simple condition. I just took a number, okay? Integer number, okay? What is int? Int can store only the number types, okay? So I have given 14 as a number. And what is number? Number is a variable which is holding a value called 14, okay? So this is defining a variable, okay? So with the data type, primitive data type and variable name, and we are assigning using a equals to operator to assign 14 to the number okay so this is how we declare a variable okay uh, int number equals to 14 so what we are trying to do trying to achieve we wanted to check whether it is a even number or odd number so what is the condition so n is our number is our you know the value which we wanted to test whether it is odd or even right so what we are doing here we are just you know writing an if condition if in the braces we are writing a condition called number is percentage two so we were trying to make 14 divisible by 2 if it is equals to 0 then we are saying that it is a even number 
okay so the true condition is an even number what is the false condition it is an odd number okay so let us try to run this program and let's see what exactly java is going to print for the number 14 okay java if condition it printed as even number okay okay so let me go back uh, to the program okay if i change this to something else like 17 okay and if i print if condition odd number Okay, guys. So if it is like you know even, it is printing as even number, but depending on the condition. And if it is odd, it is going to print that condition as odd. Okay, if the condition fails. So that means this is our else block and this is our if block. Okay. So we'll we'll check other examples tomorrow. So we are uh, actually out of time. So tomorrow we'll start where exactly we stopped today. Uh, so the if else statement and we'll check the if else and you know the other conditional flow statements and we'll continue the loops and then we'll go for the keywords okay thanks all so if you have any questions or something do let me know uh, we can um, I, i'll try to you know resolve those things yeah If not, you know, we can, you are good to go. Uh, yeah, I can conclude the session here.